The asset management process can be used to manage the entire life cycle of IT assets. This is a diagram showing the life cycle of an asset. Starting from the purchase of an asset, you will then create a purchase request and after that you will insert a purchase order. Finally, you will record the asset receipt. This is the starting point for the asset management process. This process lets me record the receipt of new assets, reading the data of the purchase orders automatically. Once an asset is delivered, it can stay in the test area and wait for the acceptance in order to be available to the users. When it is available, it can be collected from the warehouse and assigned to a user. It can also be moved into another warehouse and replaced by another item. When it is assigned, it can be withdrawn and put again into the warehouse to be available for other users. Finally, it can be scrapped or sent to the maintenance area. An asset assigned to a user can then be moved for two reasons. The user changes seat, so we want to move every asset belonging to that user from one room to another. Or, there is a move between users, so an asset assigned to a user is then assigned to another one. On the other side, regarding the movements of assets leaving the warehouse, you have the possibility to move them from one warehouse to another or to definitively withdraw an asset for its disposal. All of these subflows are managed by the asset management process. The most complex subflow is the reception of goods which follows different steps the order registration, the delivery registration, and the guided creation of the new assets. You also have other subflows corresponding to the different movements already discussed in the previous diagram. Let's see a sample registration workflow for the reception of new goods. In the navigation menu, there are two sections related to this topic. The first one is the Purchase folder, in particular the Purchase Orders class where you can record the data related to the inserted orders and all details of the goods you expect to receive. In the Asset Management folder, you can start the asset management process. In the first step, you should simply select the type of workflow you want to start. In our case, we will select Goods Reception. In the second step, you can select the order from which you want to record the new goods. You can first select the supplier. After that, in the drop-down list, there are only orders related to that supplier that have not already been dispatched. Finally, in the following step, you can choose to register the delivery of the goods. At this point, by clicking on this button, 
I can modify the quantity of goods that are being delivered. In this form, you can find the order rows previously selected, the ordered quantity, the delivered quantity, and the current delivery quantity that I want to record at this moment. For example, in this case, I want to record the reception of two printers related to this order row. After that, I have to close it and advance the process. At this point in the form, we have the main data related to the order row that I am now processing. Through this button, I get a form where I can insert new assets guided by the system. As you can see, most of the data related to these new assets have been automatically pre-inserted by the system. In particular, the system can complete the data regarding the supplier, the order, and the order row. It can insert the status, in this case, owned as it refers to goods that I've purchased. It can also complete the model and the status which is registered as available. What I have to do at this point is to add the specific codes of the assets I am receiving. Then I will insert a code for the new printers, a description, and a serial number. If needed, I can also set the warranty expiration date. Let's now close this panel and advance the process. At this point, I can review the data of the assets created in the system. Here, the records of the new printers have been inserted in my CMDB. And I have here the possibility to check the data inserted in the previous step. I can also complete them with other information. By advancing again this process, we come back on the page where I have to register the delivery quantity. As you can see, on the first row, the ordered quantity is obviously 7, but the delivered quantity has changed to 2. On the other side, in the second row, there are no registered goods. At this point, you can go on with the registration of goods reception until the delivered quantity coincides with the ordered quantity. Otherwise, you can decide to close the delivery process of this order earlier in case, for example, the order of the remaining quantities has been canceled. Let's see what happens if I select these flags. I have to close the panel and click on Advance. In this way, the system is asking me to confirm if I am really sure that I want to close the process earlier. I do it, and by advancing once more the process, it closes. Let's now see how the order data has been updated. As you can see, the status has been updated and set as partially delivered. And if I check the order rows, I can see that both of them have been closed earlier. And for both of them, I can also check the quantity that has actually been delivered.
Let's now see another sample of one of the subflows of the asset management process. For example, we can perform the assignment of a new asset to a user. To do this, I can select the type assignment that I need to advance the process. After that, I can select the warehouse containing the asset to assign. After that, I select the destination user and the destination room. Here, I can see all available assets that are in the warehouse I chose. Let's select this notebook and close this window. Here I can also view the hardware currently assigned to the destination user. I can view the user data and also his contact info if I want to ask him for information. I can attach documents and I can also see that the system generates an email that will be sent to the user in order to notify him that the new hardware has been assigned to him. At this point, after advancing, the selected notebook will be assigned to the user. In fact, if we go on to the record of the selected user, which was Tom Smith, we can now see that this notebook has been assigned to him. Furthermore, if I move to the card of the notebook, I can see that the status is not available anymore, but it is in use. And its location has been changed from the warehouse to the room that I indicated in the assignment process. So, the system automatically carried out all updates needed to maintain the consistency of all of the information about the user and the assigned asset.